Well, welcome everyone. Thanks to our seminar about what is a co-op and to talk to some of our current students on co-op as well as learn a little bit about what it means to be on a Yukon co-op. My name is Beth Secchi. I'm an associate director at the Career Center and I oversee the Yukon co-op program. Today, shortly, we'll be meeting some current students on co-op. You see them on the panel now, as well as my colleague Dana and my colleague Dom, who will speak a little bit more about their role in the office. And then Dom is going to facilitate um, the panel, and I should say Dana is going to talk about her role. She does not work at the Career Center. I didn't mean to imply that she did. So um, I'm going to just do some quick conversation about what co-op is, and then, like I said, then I'll turn it over to the panel. This session is being recorded, and if you have any questions, feel free to throw them into the chat, and depending on what they are, either we'll answer them in the moment or we'll answer them at the end. Um, and Dom has some pre-prepared questions to ask our panelists, but again, if anybody has a question that they think would benefit everyone, by all means, throw it in the chat and Dom can incorporate that as well. And Dom, if you can't see the chat for some reason, just let Steve or me know and we can let you know that there is one. Okay, so I just want to briefly mention, introduce what a co-op is. And a co-op is when a student takes um, time off from their coursework and decides to work full-time in a position that is either career related, major related, or both. They don't have to be in sync um, for everyone except perhaps an international student. Then there's a little, it gets a little tricky. But for US citizens, it can be your major interest or your career interest or both. We've had students who are, um, in fact, I think we have, I don't know if the person's here today, I don't remember everyone's position, you'll hear about it, but I think we have um, one of our IBM students is an engineer perhaps, or we have an engineer student who's doing a business role, so it's that kind of thing. Um, not everyone, not every engineer does an engineer role, not every finance student does a finance role, for example. So the student works in lieu of going to school for the semester. So the minimum time for a co-op at UConn is 14 weeks, which is the term length of a semester. However, we really do recommend it be four to six months, if possible, 16 to um, 24 weeks, or even eight months. We find that the students tend to have a better co-op experience, as does the employer when it is a little longer. The student does not earn tuition, does not pay tuition, and does not earn any credits for the co-op experience as a co-op student. Yet, because the student is working with the university, they're considered a full-time experience, full-time enrolled student, which is super helpful when it comes to housing. If the student wanted to live on housing and commute to the co-op, it also um, is easier to work with financial aid. If a student gets offered a co-op experience and chooses to not work with the university, then they have to take a leave of absence and work with the dean's office and sometimes even have to re-enroll to the university. So it's just much cleaner and smoother to do the co-op. A UConn co-op, like I said, it's about, it's the course this semester a little bit longer. The students have to get their experiences approved by the career office or if they're an engineering student by my colleague Dana, who again, we'll talk in a moment. Um, while the student is on co-op, there's some pre-forms that have to be filled out as far as earnings and just expectations and learning with the supervisor and with the experience. We do a check-in halfway through and then there's a small reflection paper at the end and a resume submitted again with your experience because we are the Career Center so of course we want to see you write a new resume. There are many benefits and perks to being on co-op which our student panelists will talk about so I'm actually not going to go into too many um, and the other element though with the word benefits students as a co-op are considered usually full-time employees at the company, but they're not necessarily given all the same benefits that a full-time employee might receive, like medical or retirement. Um, so when, I, when we say benefits, it means more it's beneficial to you as a student if you do co-op and how that might impact your career trajectory. Also, there are many students, and I don't know if our panelists wanna to speak to this at all, who don't take an extra time when they do co-op, I know at least one of our panelists was very intentional because of the pandemic, and, and you can speak to that if there's more than one of you. I just know of one person specifically who chose to do this in lieu of going to classes for a year. Typically, when we're not in a pandemic and people plan for co-op, usually sometime during freshman, sophomore year, they make the decision, yes, I want to do co-op. It is definitely viable to do a co-op, take that semester off from classes, and still graduate in four years. Um, and Dana has served as an advisor in the past and even concurrently, so maybe Dana, you can speak to that in a moment as well. Um, so co-op though truly is a phenomenal experience that often, not always, but often leads to full-time offers with the place of co-op. It really depends on where you are. And you could also, if you live on campus, any of our campuses that have housing, 
you can still participate in activities even though you're not taking classes because again you're affiliated with the university so that's sort of just the general really broad perspective on co-op happy to answer questions after the panel or you can email us at careercoop at careercoop at uconn.edu and dominique and i handle that inbox or if you're an engineering student you reach out to dana and we're happy to talk further so enough said on that so that's me i'm going to introduce dana to talk a minute and dana when you're done if you can pass the baton over to dom that would be great great thank you thanks beth so as beth said my name is dana i am in the school of engineering and i work with wiley and the ccb to coordinate um, and organize co-ops for engineering students i serve as the co-op advisor so i'm the main bridge between the student and the university while they are on co-op I meet with students before co-op, during co-op, at the end of co-op. And as Beth said, um, students can fall into two categories. We do have some students that take a semester off to do a co-op and end up staying at the university a semester or two longer before they graduate. So instead of graduating in four years, it'll be four and a half or five. But we do have many students who can do a co-op, take the semester to fully do the co-op and not take courses and still graduate on time. This is all dependent upon where you are in your academic coursework. Many students bring in early college experience credit or transfer credit, and this gets them ahead and gives them a semester where we can work with them as advisors to shuffle courses around so you can go on co-op and not worry about coursework. You do have the opportunity to take a class or two while on co-op. We don't recommend it. it. It really depends on what your schedule is and what the employer approves. But we do have students that will take a class while on co-op, which then allows them to graduate on time. So if you are interested in co-op and you don't want to be at the university longer than four years, it doesn't mean you can't do the experience. Just definitely reach out to myself, your academic advisor, the CCD, and we can all work together to make sure that we look at your schedule and your courses to see if there's a way we can shuffle them around. Similar to when students study abroad, they're, they're not necessarily at the university longer, you can move coursework around. So there are many options and opportunities to explore. If after this presentation, any of you are engineering students and you do have engineering specific questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And with that, Dom, you can uh, take over. Thanks, Dana. Um, so as Beth has mentioned earlier, my name is Dominique Moore, and I am the graduate assistant for career development. Um, and I work very closely with the experiential learning side. So our four credit internship classes and our co-op classes. Uh, so I'm just going to get straight into the panel. Um, the first thing that I will have all of the panelists do is to just introduce yourself. So your name, your year, your major, where you're completing your co-op and what type of work you do at the co-op. Um, you like to I start? Can go. Oh, thanks, Aditi. Yep. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Aditi. I'm currently a junior studying computer science and engineering, and I'm minoring in math. And last semester, I did a co-op at NASA at the JSC Center. It was a virtual co-op. And um, the type of work that I was able to do or my project that I had done was um, writing a software. So I ended up doing a machine learning algorithm. And so a lot of my co-op um, pretty much involved learning how to do anything related to machine learning and then applying my knowledge, um, mostly in Python. I can go next. Uh, my name is Clarice. I am I'm a junior slash senior um, and I'm a human development and family sciences major minoring in Spanish. Uh, I work at the Center for Career Development actually uh, with our programming team. I'm a program and content coordinator and I'm continuing my co-op from last semester. Um, and as Beth mentioned before, um, I chose to do a co-op this semester um, and this year in lieu of classes uh, because of the pandemic, but we'll be able to get into that in a bit too. Um, I'll go next. My name is Sean. I'm a uh, Sean Nguyen. I'm a junior and uh, my major is man management information systems. That's in the School of Business. And um, I'm working for Collins Aerospace in a operator's digital accelerator role. Um, I work with industrial engineers. Um, 
operations people and digital technology people to come up with solutions to support our people down on the shop floor that produce numerous airplane parts. For example, I might be writing something in Visual Basic, um, some sort of app that helps track a part on the on its way through the design process, or I may just be trying to automate a process with a Python script, for example. That's all I got. Hello, I'll go next. So I'm Sydney. Um, I'm currently studying environmental science, class of 2023 in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Um, so I've been doing co-op last semester and this semester. So I'm currently an AmeriCorps member stationed up in Buffalo, working at the Buffalo City Hall. Particularly, I'm positioned within Buffalo Sewer Authority. My official title is Community Engagement and Green Infrastructure, sorry, Green Infrastructure Vista. Um, my breadth of what I do is pretty wide, um, but to keep it condensed, I usually say it's in two segments. So I work with our Green Infrastructure Program Rain Check, doing a lot of outreach and education efforts. And then I also manage our social media platforms and just build public support and appreciation for our treatment plant, which is where I'm currently sitting right now. So, so excited to be here. Um, I'm not sure who's left. I think it's just me, but I'm over here playing with my playing with my network uh, preferences right now. So sorry about that. But uh, my name is Kent Anderson Jr. I am a junior standing at the University of Connecticut. Um, I also, like Aditi, was spending uh, the last year with NASA JSC um, with two separate branches. Uh, I was with the uh, ES2 Structures branch, working on a lot of uh, material <clears throat> material science stuff. Um, uh, civil engineering type work. And then I spent my last tour with CX3, which is the EVA, um, so extravehicular activities group who plan, train, and fly, execute uh, EVAs. Uh, so a, a good mix of, of work there. Um, and like I said, I took a year off completely from school last year. So uh, I'm sure I have a, a lot to add um, from that perspective. So. Great, thank you all for introducing yourselves. Um, so we'll just get straight into it. The first section that we're covering is leading up to applying for a co-op. Um, the question is, when and why did you decide to participate in a co-op? So initially, as well as if you are in your second type of co-op. And Clarice, if you just wanna start us off. Sure. Um, so going into this year, this is supposed to be my senior year um, and my, my last year at UConn, um, my roommates and I were planning on living on campus and, um, you know, finishing up our coursework all together. Um, and my best friend and I had a conversation a few weeks before the semester started and um, it was just a matter of deciding, you know, whether or not we wanted to finish up our degrees this year when the academic experience wouldn't be the same because we'd be living at home because we decided to cancel our housing. Um, and so I had spoken to um, some leaders in our office at the Center for Career Development in like the year prior because I'd been a career intern there previously um, and about doing a co-op and about what I would be interested in. And I love the idea of creating programming for the office and focusing it on different populations of students and working in that um, area. And so when I thought about what I could do to make this year more gratifying, um, I thought about, you know, the idea of doing a co-op and working full time, you know, keeping in mind like my education that I had completed so far. But um, I reached out to the office um, and the Center for, Center for Career Development have always been so supportive of me, like in my own career pursuits. Um, and also, you know, in wanting to help me continue my education. So I got to contact them a few weeks or a month before the semester started. And I said, is there any chance that we can do this co-op now as opposed to in the spring? Because that was my initial plan um, to be doing it presently, um, even pandemic aside. So um, yeah, it, it was really a, a choice about um, you know, what I wanted to do this year and, and what I thought I could do to make my time this year valuable and then and then wrap up my education next year. Sydney, would you like to answer? I know you're on your second one as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. So this was actually something I was thinking about before COVID really hit in um, February. So something I was a semester into my freshman year and I was just thinking, thinking about like alternative service learning experiences. And I was really lucky because going into college, I had a lot of credits um, already accrued um, through ECEs and APs. Um, so, you know, looking at an alternative experience where I didn't necessarily need to be invested in classes was feasible. So it was a matter of if I wanted to, you know, just do a, a regular like three years and then graduate early or just do something a little different where I didn't need to unnecessarily be taking classes. Um, and it was interesting because I didn't know actually we had a co-op program that I knew was something that I looked at at like Northeastern because I know there's is really known. So I remember just digging a little around and is there a way I could kind of like finesse it with like an internship? And then I found that we had a co-op program and I was so ecstatic because it was something that I wanted to bring home with UConn. Um, so then how I ended up finding my particular program was I was brought it up to my supervisor, the fact that I wanted to do something just a little different, a little alternative. And so she kind of um, led me into this like AmeriCorps path, um, which was definitely not something that I had like uh, kind of searched for, but it kind of just found me. Um, and so, yeah, I'm doing this this full year. So again, I'm thankful that I had the opportunity to do that. Um, and yeah, I think, um, you know, to be away from home, um, I think is, I'm so fortunate to be that because I know there's a lot of people not in my position during the pandemic. Um, so I've just, I've been very grateful for this opportunity um, to do something a little alternative during COVID, especially since it was um, something I was thinking about a little prior to. Um, I'm just going to move on to the next question. Um, and then just generally speaking, if we all just want to keep our responses to like a minute or two, um, that would be great as well for this panel. So the next question that I have is how did you negotiate your classes to make room for a co-op? Kenneth, possibly if you would like to start this off. Uh, yeah, sure. Um... So <clears throat> just to start it off, or let me just preface it with saying that I had no idea that this was a um, co-op per se that I was joining. I just thought it was a cool summer internship. And then I went through the process of interviewing and everything and found out, you know, all that it really entailed. Um, and by that point, it was like, you know, I'm not going to say no to NASA. So uh, for me, it was just a matter of what can I do to put myself in the best position to perform well uh, where I am. And for me, that means I have to have 100% of my mental right at NASA. So I spoke uh, uh, with the um, career for co-op uh, board and or department, I guess, um, and just try to figure out what my options were. And they said, hey, you can completely just enroll in like a co-op course, basically. And we'll put you down as co-op. You keep your students standing. We'll take care of everything else. And from there, you just you can focus on you. And that was honestly such a big weight off my shoulders that I was I went down there with 100% confidence, uh, just knowing that everything was going to be taken care of uh, back here. So uh, thankfully to, to you guys here, I, I didn't have to worry too much about uh, negotiating anything. Would anyone else like to answer that? Yeah, I guess I'll add something. Now I'll add something to that. I guess in was it in terms of uh, being able to graduate before uh, four years and going into a co-op, um, even if you don't have the, the credits to coming in from high school or whatever, if you're doing a co-op is really in your uh, goals during your college career. Um, it's just at one more class over like 15 credits. So if you average like 18 credits per semester, up until your junior, was it up until whenever you want to do your co-op? And then afterwards, you should be able to graduate within uh, four years. That's uh, at least my plan, and that's how it worked out for me. Great. Um, so the next question that I have is, I'm gonna blend two questions into one. How did you go about finding your co-op 
And what did the application process look like once you found your co-op um, to enroll? And whoever would like to start can. Yep, I can go. Um, so um, I wasn't ever really looking specifically for a co-op, if I'm being um, completely honest. I was just looking for internships. I was looking through things like Handshake, Indeed. Um, I was looking around on LinkedIn. And then um, what was really helpful was the Dean of Student of Engineering. Um, he had sent out an application and was like, like big letters, NASA, and something about like the first 500 students to apply will be considered, so do it quick. And so my first thought was, okay, let's um, do it as soon as possible. And so I applied right away. And um, what really helped me in applying was making sure you have of course, a good resume. So going to um, like the career resume building workshop and then cover letter, that was extremely important. And so just because the process was super quick, because I was like, okay, I have to make sure that I get in, in these like first 100 students. Um, what helped me was having a, almost like a basic staple cover letter that I could um, send to any company with just changing either a few words or adding in a few sentences specific to that company. And so that's what really helped me um, ensure, I guess, that I feel myself at least getting in the first 700. Yeah, yeah let me jump in right there. Uh, sorry, Sydney, just real that's quick. Okay. Uh, I just want to say, uh, just because I, it was similar to, to a Diddy, um, we both got emails from our, from our deans. And so that's just to go for anyone watching read those emails, right? You never know what you're gonna find in there. And, you know, it could be a great opportunity that you don't even realize. So always read the emails that the, the department sends out. Yeah, and I was just gonna tag on with something I um, mentioned. Um, I started to answer this little question before and I caught myself, but um, I remember the first time writing a resume I know what I was doing. I didn't know what like a good resume looked like. And I remember going on Yukon site that has like a whole guide about how to write cover letters and how to write resumes. And it was so extremely helpful and extremely influential, I think, in the success of um, obtaining my um, position, just because that's like the first like selling piece you have. And for even that to just look very strong kind of shows more into like the depth then of your work and your character. So I think that was extremely influential as well as just like being um, on top of like connecting with people, um, just like the value of that networking or just, you know, being forward and, uh, you know, wanting to talk to people, not just being an application, but trying to find a way to put, you know, your face to that name and really try to connect if that's possible, I think was really beneficial for me in kind of just more establishing myself before like any interview or such. Thank you all for those answers. Um, and then really quick, if Clarice or Sean, if you want to answer, um, how did you go about narrowing down which co-op you wanted to pursue um, and finding like your actual co-op? Uh, Clarice, you want to go or you want me to answer? Feel free to, feel free to start. <laughs> All right, so um, when you're searching for co-ops or internships, um, you gotta find and strike between sending them out in volume and sending out quality applications. Um, you need to make sure each one of your applications are tailored to whatever the position is. Personally, when I was narrowing, narrowing down my co-ops, I wanted to get a position that's of course related to my major. So that was just narrowing it down to looking it up, stuff on LinkedIn or Handshake, digital technology, analytics, all that. Um, taking note of positions I was interested in and saving them. And when I looked into the companies more after research, I was able to narrow it down to however many so. And then, of course, I applied to Collins and made it here. So notes for me would be send out a decent amount of applications because uh, you can't get caught just applying to one and not getting it, but also make sure those applications are tailored to the positions that you're applying to. 
Yeah, I think that's a really good point too. Um, I was kind of uniquely situated in that the only company I'd really considered doing one uh, co-op with was the Center for Career Development. Um, but I think the most important thing for me when deciding whether or not to pursue that opportunity or to like find some other kind of experiential learning opportunity was really thinking about how it relates to not only my major because your major doesn't dictate like what career you go into, but um, but what paths I was pursuing post graduation. Um, and one of the things I really enjoyed in my last internship that I had, which was in talent acquisition, was creating presentations and, and content for people within our team and our office. And a lot of that mirrored what I was going to be able to do at the Center for Career Development, too. Um, and so that, that really made me more confident in the fact that I was going to be stepping into this role. Um, and I think that's something that any student who's looking for different co-op opportunities can take with them, too, you know, just making sure that it's not only you know, valuable within the parameters of your degree, but you know, what you want to go into after. Thank you both. So this next kind of section that we're going into is once you're on the actual co-op. So if one or two people would like to answer, the first question is, what have you been doing during your co-op to make sure that you are getting the most out of your experience? Um, I can jump in just because my co-op started before COVID. So <clears throat> I don't know how much of us here have that experience, but so we started before COVID um, and the co-op required us to move down to Houston. So I was in Houston and, you know, being there alone, uh, the first thing you want to do is, you know, meet people, make friends and just make a group. Right. And so what I did was just joined you know, as many things as I could, the same way you come into, you know, a freshman in college. Join as many things where you can meet as many people as you can, find what you like the best, stick to those. Um, so what I did was I got really involved in anything and everything volunteering. Um, I, I'm really big on volunteering, especially with um, minority communities. And NASA had a, a big, um, a couple of big programs down there uh, for, for different orgs, but I stuck to the, uh, to the black and Hispanic uh, organizations that that work down there. And so I, I met a lot of great people down there with that. Uh, apart from that, I made sure to go to any social events that they had um, pre COVID. And then, you know, just things like that. And then after COVID, things really had to adjust, but uh, just attending any video conferences that we could, you know, um, lunch and learns, things like that, um, which thankfully, since there's a lot less community to do um you can you know jump around from from video chat to video chat uh, so that helps and you do get to do more that way but it does uh suck that we can't really have that one-on-one -on -one interaction anymore but you know that's that's kind of what i did just be involved and, and do more than than what you were asked to do right Yeah, for me, I think the biggest um, motto I have, and it may be a cliche, but like, don't be afraid to ask questions. And I know that sounds like straightforward, but it is so valuable. Um, I think working up at City Hall, I work with a lot of people that um, are very like high end or like very much high on, on the ladder and they have a lot of things going on. Um, and not being afraid to be vocal about what you need and being asking questions because that will make your expectations more clear and the your products and the stuff that you create better. So really not being afraid to ask those questions and being confident about like the space that you hold, I think is really valuable. My one last tidbit, I think it is difficult in a sense where this is my first huge like um, workforce development experience and going out of school where the expectations are very clear cut, right? Like there's a deadline, um, there's a scoring rubric. It's very, very much like um, blatantly there. And then going into the workforce, it's incredible opportunity, but those expectations can get a little more um, vague if you don't really ask those deliberate questions and be like, what do you need? So I know what success looks like. I think that's just something I'm continuing learning, but putting that in place has been so alleviating and very, very valuable. I definitely um, agree with that last part that Sydney said. Um, 
don't be afraid to, of course, ask for what you need. Um, because going into my co-op, everyone was telling me like, okay, this is NASA. There's so many benefits you're going to get from after this internship, including connections, things you've learned. Um, and then in like, I guess week two or three, I noticed just because um, it was a virtual internship and I was at home, I wasn't really talking to very many people outside my small circle of my team. And so I was like, okay, well, to make the most out of this, I really want to make sure that I'm learning about what other people are doing, um, like building on my network. And so although I like, I felt super awkward um, mentioning it to my mentor because you know, they've done this for like years having co-op students, but I mentioned to my mentor and my supervisor, and I was like, hey, I think it would be good for me to get opportunities to meet more people, whether they be um, co-workers or other students who have taken the same um, steps that I have. And so after that, like, I almost like every two weeks, I'd be having lunch meetings, meeting other students and other managers. Um, and that was super helpful. Thank you. Those are really some great answers, especially like the networking component, um, kind of like advocating for yourself. So I appreciate you all um, answering that one. The next question that I have um, is, what can other students expect if they participate in a co-op in your field? Um, and going even further, do you think that your co-op is a good example um, of a typical co-op for your career area of interest? And if Clarice, if you want to start us off. Sure. So I think I'm studying HDFS um, and there are a lot of different career outcomes from a degree program like that because it's pretty interdisciplinary. Like you have people who go into HR and um, a lot of other things like counseling and like nonprofit work. And my interests have always been kind of wide ranging. Um, and I think one of the things that the co-op at the Center for Career Development does for me um, and everyone else who works there, especially when you're a student, is it exposes you to different career paths um, and it allows you to like the space to kind of explore that. Um, and I've been really fortunate to work on a team where I'm like constantly asked, you know, is this what you want to be working on? Um, what other things are you passionate about that we can do um, to supplement, you know, what you're learning, what you want to go into? Um, and I think in that way, what I'm doing is a little bit atypical from what people in my degree program do, um, but it also is not at the same time. There's a really good balance, you know, between exploring, you know, new things and and staying within the the realms of my degree. Sean, would you like to answer that one as well? I asked about students. Um, what can they expect if they participate in a co-op in your field? Oh yeah, sure. Um, when you're a MIS major like myself, um, MIS people, you'll find them across many disciplines, sometimes in engineering, sometimes in operations, and sometimes in financial roles. Um, my position just happens to be one that touches upon those three, and I'm working with people in all those three fields. I think it's a it's uh, very typical of what an MIS major might expect in the future, especially with uh, the whole talks of many fields trying to integrate more of their technologies. Thanks, y'all. Um, so my next question is, what advice can you give on transitioning from being a full-time student to working full-time in a co-op? If maybe two or three of you would like to quickly answer that one. Uh, honestly, for me, uh, sorry, I don't know if I interrupted, but for me, it's been um, similar levels of like discipline and organization, but here I um, see the value in it so much more. Um, just because, like I mentioned, like there's deadlines and stuff, it's more easily to follow, but you know, when I'm in this space, I just realize how valuable my time is. Like that is the thing like that is 
so valuable when I'm giving to other people, right? Like that's all I have to give is my time. So really, really understanding, you know, what to prioritize, who to allocate my time to, what to allocate my time to, as well as making sure like, um, you know, I obviously want to be flexible in the fact that I'm also a person that has interests outside of work um, and not necessarily letting, you know, my work time just completely be my experience. Um, but just, I think the levels of like organization and schedule building um, and keeping myself accountable to that, um, I think definitely has been very, very important for my mental health as well as just upkeeping the demands of my job. I think that's a really good point. I think about that um, a lot within just the structure of my day, something that's been super important um, for me to stay on track similarly is to structure my day. So um, every day I make like a list of what I want to accomplish and I try and check off as much as I can. Um, but I also think it's important to make like realistic expectations for yourself too and communicate with your supervisor if like you are on co-op um, because I, at the end of the day, like you are, at a point in your in your life or in your education where you are used to being or accustomed to being a full-time student um, and being you know on for you know seven eight hours a day can sometimes take a different toll like on on your experience and and on like the structure of your day so i would say you know just be honest about you know your progress and and the progress or the projects that you're working on um, and just and try and you know mimic like the same organization that you have in your full time classes in your in your work too. It's helped me. Yeah, depending on your position, I feel like you'll find that <clears throat> the diff the biggest difference for me between full time and student is you're just realizing how much free time you have, kind of um, depending on how you're using it, because you clock in, you clock out, and then what do you do after that, right? Um, some people take their work home with them. Some people choose not to. I'm one of those people who like to have a balance, so I choose not to. So what do you do with that time? Um, you could, you know, work out, you could do all these things, or you could do team building things, right? Go out with the team that you're working with, go out to lunch with them, or go out to dinner with them, uh, get to know them. What are they doing? Learn more about uh, the organization that you're working at through them, right? Things like that. So I feel like prioritizing your time in a way that also benefits and helps you get the most out of the experience that you're trying to gain or that you're going through at the time. So um, it's a lot, <laughs> the differences, but I feel like that's the main one for me. It's just what to do with my free time so that I'm not just uh, goofing off or whatever, getting into trouble, right? Thanks, yeah. Um, so the next question I have is, what do you like the most about participating in your co-op? And Aditi, if you want to start us off. Yeah, what I like the most is um, a co-op, I would say, has very similar benefits to doing an internship. However, you, I guess, get the feel of what it is working nine to five um, every single day. So it gives you definitely that insight of working as if you are actually working a real job after you graduate. And so getting to see into that lifestyle has been very interesting and um, a definitely very valuable experience. And again, I think understanding that work-life balance, like what Kenneth was speaking out earlier, um, is very important. I was at home and after five or six o'clock, I would clock out and I felt like in the um, first few weeks, like what do I do with my time? You know, like am I supposed to be um, giving more attention to the work that I do? And it was a sort of like, I guess, confusion as to am I supposed to be doing more work than I have to or am I not doing enough work? Um, and so really understanding where you stand with the work that you are being assigned and then getting that life balance is super important just so you're not ex um, completely consumed with what you're doing. Yeah, I'll uh, add on to that. And um, sort of ties into uh, transitioning from being a full time student going to a full time co op. Um, the work you do at a co op is uh, different yet the same as what you did as a student. 
for me, it's a little more uh, fulfilling since I get to use what I learned in school to uh, get results down down here, and you get to see the results of the labor you put in. And that's uh, been really uh, rewarding for myself. And just being able to go and work and be able to do things that, I don't know, using your skills, you know, really uh, fun to use stuff you've learned and actually apply it. That's uh, the thing I've liked the most about participating in my co-op. Thank you both. So the last question in this section is, what professional development opportunities, if any, has the organization provided for you? Um, Sydney, if you wanna speak on that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's been, for such an immersive experience in regards to like the knowledge that I surround myself with that I feel like I've learned more than I ever have in school just being here for like six months I think so far um which it's just it's crazy how much you learn when you're working with it every single day like I'm at the treatment plant right now and I'm certainly no expert but I could tell you like a lot of um like wastewater processes which I could never tell you anything about that before which is really cool but I think one of the biggest things that has been really cool for me is um we Buffalo Sewer fronted a climate change vulnerability assessment, which I know sounds kind of technical, um, but it's just like an initial phase in us setting foundations for a climate action plan. And I was actually able to work on that, do some mapping. We're currently doing community outreach, um, you know, so I was involved with like surveying and, you know, building up those efforts. Um, so I'm going to be able to get published in like that assessment, which is really, really cool. Um, and it's like a citywide um, like project and like my name will be on it. And I'm so, so utterly thankful that that opportunity was given to me. Um, and I think that is just kind of shows the longevity that the benefits with this program gives you. Like that's something that I'll have on my resume like for the rest of my life. And it was like, not only will I have that, but it's also like the, um, you know, what it gave me in regards to the experience, just like working with that and like learning GIS and all those additional um, things I had to, uh, you know, understand um, was just really, really huge in um, my own workforce and education. Thank you. Um, Kenneth, would you like to briefly touch on this as well? Yeah, sure. Sorry, I lost my mouse for a second. But, uh, NASA is really good, I'd say, at wanting their people to progress. Um, they have, as you can imagine, multiple organizations just focused um, at the center uh, around how we can develop, you know, each other as well as develop um, people who are already, you'd think, were, know what they're doing, right? So we have everyone from branch chiefs to department heads. Everyone's always uh, being evaluated. Everyone's always being critiqued, but it's all, um, positive in terms of they they try to frame it in a good light um so as a as a uh, intern for example uh co-op intern they have many meetings with us throughout the semester where we go over our progress as um <laughs> where we go over our progress throughout the semester on on the work that we've accomplished what we can do better uh with our mentors as well as with the branch chiefs so you're always seeing your bosses um, your immediate bosses and then the ones uh, high above you, maybe three levels above you, you see once in a while, but they're really good about keeping that connection and that network clear for you, keeping that chain evident so that you know where you're trying to go if you are trying to get there. If not, they're going to help you move to, you know, wherever it is that you want to go. Um, they, they're really good about keeping their people within NASA. So I think there's might be specific to NASA, but I imagine more most companies have uh, something similar uh, in, in terms of a mindset on how they want to develop their their workers. Thank you. So getting into the last couple of questions um, for after the co-op ends, I want to ask um, how do you all plan on continuing to network with people that you've met um, while on co-op once it ends? Um, Aditi or Clarice, if one of you would like to start. Yeah, so um, before ending my co-op, I made sure to get the contact of my both my mentor, my supervisor, um, along with connecting with everyone on LinkedIn, just to 
I guess, keep in touch, see what everyone is up to. So that was really nice. And then also with my other, um, like the co-op students that um, were working the same term that I did, we have a group chat. And so that really helps us either for students who are continuing to do another term in the summer or just to see what other people are up to. Um, I made sure to get the contacts of them. And so that I guess that kind of makes me feel in the loop, even though I'm not doing a co-op right now with students that are doing the uh, co-op right now. I'm like learning about what they're doing, what's going on at um, the headquarters. So that's nice. Yeah, I think LinkedIn is obviously the, the number one tool um, for connecting, especially remotely. Um, and of course, like keeping emails and, and contact information that that's been one way that um, not only I've just kept up with people I'm connected with in my office and that I've met through this co-op, but other internships previously. Um, I think efforts to connect with people that you've met should like mirror mirror those two. Um, but I, I really like the idea of, you know, staying in touch by uh, group chats and just setting up calls every once in a while um, or, or, you know, maybe sending an email to a supervisor previously that you had, you know, to say, um, hi, I just wanted to, you know, talk about this new experience I'm doing or um, something that I'm involved in presently and how much the experience that I had with um, you and the team at blank, um, you know, how that is contributing to my success now. Um, and I think people remember things like that, notes, um, notes and communication like that. So that, that's something that I've done in the past, but. Thank you both. Um, and then really quickly, what is one thing that you're looking forward to when you return to classes next fall? And what's one tip that you would like to give students who would like to participate in a co-op? Um, Sean, Sydney, one of you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. Mind if I go first, Sydney? Well, uh, first thing I'm looking forward to when classes return next fall, hopefully, was I'm a knock on wood. Uh, most of us are back in person. We see something that resembles more of a normal semester. Can't wait to go back in a classroom, draw stuff on a whiteboard, be there. And um, I guess tips for people that want to participate in a co-op. Um, I say um, getting a co-op is like the first step. Um, if you get it and when you're there, that's when the real stuff begins. You have to uh, put in the work. You're there for a reason. You're there to uh, not only learn, but contribute. And um, it's not all for without waste, as um, they'll probably notice. And you get to uh, learn new things, and you get to apply stuff, and you get to do some cool things that you would normally not in a school setting. Yeah, and I'll just quickly add to that. Um, I think being on my co-op has surprisingly also showed me the value of being in the classroom as well, um, which I didn't think that would um, necessarily also be an outcome. But I think being somewhere where it's so immersive, um, like I'm thrown into assignment and then I kind of have to, you know, paddle back and be like, okay, now I need to, you know, learn these steps so I execute it properly. And so I'm kind of excited to go back to classes. So I have that like preliminary steps, like back in the classroom of like learning that process. So then next time when I go back in the workforce, I kind of have that knowledge prior rather than feeling like I really have to, you know, learn as I, I do stuff a lot here. I think that's something though that you can will continue indefinitely just being in a career you're still constantly learning. Um, but there's a little bit of that structure that I'm like, ooh, actually classes do, do sound a little bit nice, but um, both experiences have been amazing. So definitely excited though um, for you know the future. Thank you. Um, before I hand it over to Beth to close this out, does anyone have any last thoughts or things that they would like to share about their experience? I have something just super general, um, kind of echoing what I said uh, at the beginning is just you never know what the opportunity is going to be that changes your life. Uh, you never know where it's going to come from, you know, what email it's going to be on. So just always have your eyes open, always be looking for it, because half the time when you're not looking is when you find it, right? So just be ready for it. And if you're ever doubting yourself and you think, you know, I, I couldn't, you know, work for NASA or I couldn't do this or do that. Uh, chances are you probably can. Uh, you're just 
psyching yourself out. So just relax, you know, do the application. If you don't get in the first time and you realize that, you know, where whatever the organization is, you really want to work there, apply again. Um, we have our whole lives ahead of us, right? We're very young, so there's no reason to be scared, no reason to give up. This is when we're supposed to take chances. Um, so just believe in yourself and, and if you see the opportunity, jump on it. If I could quickly follow up on what Kenny just said, is I know that, that you get spammed with emails from the university. We know this, especially now, but it is important to at least eyeball them because it's all in good faith that we want to share all the amazing opportunities that the university has for you. And if you don't read them, at least eyeball them, you can miss something. And we're here to help you. We're here to help you succeed academically, professionally. So always ask, read, ask, inquire. And if you don't get in the first time, there will be more opportunities, but it doesn't happen if you don't try. And we're here to help you try. So please keep that in mind that always, always we're here for you guys. Thank you all so much for answering those questions, being here, being present um, on this Wednesday afternoon. Um, we definitely appreciate you taking the time to kind of help out the future students um, in the co-op program. Um, so now I'm gonna turn it over to Beth to sort of close us out. Thanks, Dom and Dana. Um, great facilitation and Dana, I appreciate that extra reminder and all of you just of course, we appreciate you acknowledging the Career Center and just you gave, I think, some incredible information to our audience about how to prepare, how to apply, to go for it. The pros and cons, there's definitely more pros. I think that's definitely was, was a strong message that came through. I do, I realized I forgot one thing at the beginning. If anyone is looking at co-op and it's their last semester at UConn, let's say you have your chance to graduate in December a sem or a semester early, whenever that might be, Co-op sometimes is an awesome opportunity for students who then use that last semester and then will still walk in May, um, but finish their coursework in December. And so even though co-op is not an option once a person has officially graduated, it is an option if someone has finished their coursework and is delaying when they're choosing to walk. So I just wanted to mention that. Students can also do up to three co-ops, two consecutive. So that's another point that I just realized I forgot to mention at the beginning. Uh, and lastly, if I'm going to put our co-op panelists on the spot, if anyone watching this would like to reach out to any of our co-op students, send a message to careercoop at uconn.edu, and I'll be happy to forward it on to our panelists. And that way, you know, you have the person who asked the question, you have their contact information, and then you can choose to reply. So with that said, again, thank you. I know a few of you have two o'clock meetings. Um, it's 1.53 Eastern time at the moment. I'm, depending on where you are, it might be a different time, but I know if you, you do have work meetings, we wanna make sure you're feeling prepared to go to your next work uh, experience. So again, thank you all so, so much for participating and I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody. Everyone, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.